Welcome back. My name is Matt Reiners and I'm the co-founder of Eversound, a company dedicated to improving the quality of life for older adults by giving them the gift of hearing. Today I'm joined by Greg Mayfid, Director of Culture at English Meadow Senior Living based in Blacksburg, Virginia. I've gotten to know Greg over the past year or so and love how English Meadows is taking the family business approach and scaling that out to their other communities. Greg is an up and comer in the senior living space and is a leader today and will continue to be a leader in the future and has got some awesome ideas. So I'm excited to have him on here today. Thanks for joining me today, Greg. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me. I'm, I'm excited to just you know, have a conversation with you. I love it. So Greg, being the director of culture at English Meadows, you know, it's rare for me to see someone who actually has that title, um, but it's, I think it's awesome to directly call it out. But you know, how are you all thinking about culture and really practicing what you preach? Yeah, I mean, if you know, 2020 taught us anything, it was to adapt and innovate. And prior to you know the COVID nineteen pandemic as a whole, uh, Mike Williams, you know, our CEO um, and founder of our company, on obviously, um, you know, recognized a need for having a culture within a company that's full of caregivers. Um, and so when COVID hit our company and hit you know the globe as a whole, um, we recognize that, you know, we need to care for our caregivers and we need to actually care for the people that care for our residents. And so through this, you know, past two and a half years of chaos and craziness, um, our hope and our goal and our vision has been to try to build a strong culture of caregivers. You know, at the end of the day, it's you know, I'm hoping that our caregivers are taking care of our residents. And that's, you know, I think part of that um, is caring for our caregivers. And that's our hope and our culture. I love it. And, you know, I think it is so important to think about caring for your caregivers because they're so important. You know, they're the people on the front line, some of the heroes that we've really, you know, have seen over the last, gosh, two years now. And I think it's such an important thing to to think of and, and really implement. And I'm you know, I'm curious, how do you think culture plays a role in, uh, in recruitment and then on the other side of retention? I mean, I think, I think it's kind of two faceted. Um, I think first and foremost with recruitment, you got to have a place where people want to work. Um, and in order to have a place where people want to work, you have to have good retention because if you have people, if you're able to retain your staff, your team, then you're going to be able to recruit well. Um, there's this thing that Chick-fil-A believes in. It's called creating raving fans. And that's kind of our goal within English Meadows is to create raving caregivers. And what that ultimately is, is, you know, people who actually come work for us, uh, enjoy working for us and tell others about what it's like to work for us. And by, by that, our hope is that our caregivers will actually be the ones recruiting more people to come work for us. Yeah, I, I think... You know, you talk about the 80-20, and I, I believe culture plays just a huge role in that, right? I mean, when you can have your caregivers and your, your staff and your communities, you know, recruiting people for you that they think would fit into that overall culture. I mean, I know at Eversound, that's how we find a lot of our, our best people is, is through that word of mouth and creating those raving fans is, I think, what we're all, we're all striving for. So it's great to hear that. And you know, I, I know on another side of the coin here, Greg, you are into technology and innovation as well. You know, can you share anything that you're excited about and how you're seeing it playing a role in senior living as we move forward? Yes. So we actually started working with this group. Um, oh, gosh, I'm trying to think what year it was. I think it was 2018. It's called Speak2. Um, they are an Amazon-based, uh, or not, they're not Amazon, but they work with Amazon-based technology. Uh, to provide, um, you know, an experience for, you know, residents through Alexa devices. Um, and early on when we partnered with them, uh, you know, they were still, you know, building out their programs and their software. And now they've really kind of honed their skill and they've actually got it integrated in with nurse call systems. So like if, if one of our residents falls, you know, it would actually, you know, they could call out to Alexa and just say, hey, Alexa, I've fallen and it would immediately notify one of our nursing staff. Um, they can put work orders in through these devices. It's, it's really cool. So that's one thing that we've been able to use um, the past few years and just kind of grow with them. Um, and I just think what they're doing is groundbreaking. Um, and they're actually, I, I believe they're trying to get into the at-home care industry as well, which is you know more power to them. 
I was going to say, yeah, I think, you know, as we think about technology and innovation, it's, it's really starting to become more of like a sidekick and just kind of like a, something that you can, you can do some of those things where, you know, the voice is so powerful, right. And the ability to use that to create some of those things, I just think is, is going to be super helpful. And it's, it's kind of cool to see how that's being more adopted into the communities and at homes as well. I know, I know I've got Alexis all over the place and she's probably freaking out as I say her name. So it's just really cool to see what you guys are doing with that. Throughout COVID, we were trying to think of creative ways in which we could keep our residents connected, whether that be connected with one another in the building or connected with their families at home. Um, you know, I think one thing that people talk about now is, you know, the loneliness that people experience throughout this pandemic. And that was one of the hardest things to see in this industry is, you know, how lonely our seniors were and still are because of that lack of connectivity. And as we, you know, as we think about ways in which to innovate that, you know, having Amazon devices in resident rooms where they're actually able to, you know, their family can actually call in and do a video call on the device. Their grandchild could actually do a family story where on Sunday evening, he could say, hey, grandma, like I hit a home run in my Little League baseball game today. And, you know, grandma, when she wakes up Monday morning, gets a family life update, says, you know, Billy, your grandson hit a home run in his Little League game. And it's just like this ability to like connect people, you know, in a way in which like five, 10 years ago, like would not have happened. Had this pandemic hit us in the early 2000s, you know, I don't know where we would be. Um, but I think, you know, there have been a lot of opportunities to innovate throughout this pandemic. And that's one thing technology has provided for us. Yeah, and I think you bring up just a, a great point about connection and the isolation. And I'm sure everybody listening to this, you know, has seen the data. And I even think in my my own personal life about my grandparents when I was growing up, you know, I lived eight hours away. So it was tough for us to really stay connected. And and now with my daughter, I'm able to FaceTime with her grandparents and they can see her every single day. And it's just amazing how technology can help to, you know, bring those those people together. And I think it's it's really an interesting thing and awesome what you guys are doing. Um, and I know, you know, when some think about technology and innovation is almost as a deterrent to culture, but how do you see innovation either enhancing or on the other side, you know, taking away from the culture that you guys are striving for? I mean, in all honesty, I think good communication is what leads to a good culture. And, you know, I'll give you a little side story here. So two weeks ago, our um, our power went out at one of our properties in Crozet due to a massive snowstorm here. And all of our comms went down with that for about an hour and a half. We actually powered the Verizon cell tower to like the greater Crozet area, which is funny in and of itself. Um, and when all that communications was down, like we weren't able to really communicate outside of our building. Like we had to go like 20, 30 minutes away and communicate with the corporate team so we could actually, you know, figure out what, what our next steps were. And so in that lack of communication, there was chaos, there was confusion, there was distress. A good culture does not have chaos, distress, and confusion in it. A good culture has strong communication. It has, you know, to a certain degree, comfort provided by the team that you work with. Um, and so I think technology leads to good communication. When you actually have strong technology within your company, whether that be you know, from a corporate level or even a local level, you know, our team members are able to communicate. Well, we use this tool called Workplace by Facebook or by Meta now. Um, my apologies on that. Um, and they're able to actually post on Workplace, you know, uh, activities that they're doing with the residents. They're able to message each other through Workplace chat. Um, they're able to post like, hey, I need to get my shift covered today. Um, and people can pick it up through Workplace. You know, without that tool, we would not be as connected as we are now. Um, and so I think technology is, is an incredible connector for, for all groups of people, especially within our company. Yeah, I think, I think you hit on a great point there of culture. The, a, key, a key component of that is communication, right? And like, how are we communicating with each other? How are we talking to each other? What are we talking about? And if we're making those easier and kind of making it, giving people the opportunities to connect even more. Yeah, I think I definitely agree. That's when you start to see, you know, the culture even in bubble up in good ways that much more. Um, and now I always like to ask this question, Greg, and if you could look into your crystal ball and just give other senior living providers, 
just like three guiding principles as we look into the future, you know, what would you say? I mean, I think I would hit, hit on our caregivers as a whole. Um, I think 2022, so I guess first guiding principle would be 2022 is the year of the caregiver. Um, you look back at 2021 as we recovered, recovered from COVID, 2020 as we you know, put up signs that say heroes work here, um, 2022, you're the caregiver. Next guiding principle would be put your money where your mouth is. And that you know, if you truly believe that heroes work here, you're going to compensate and pay your employees what they deserve to be paid. You know, as a company, that's what we're evaluating. We are, you know, we're offering livable wages. We are, you know, we are trying to do the things to make sure that we are honoring our caregivers and showing them, hey, the work that you do here matters and you really are a hero to us. Um, and I think the third guiding principle would be is, you know, if you look back at 2020, when you see, you know, essential workers signs going up everywhere, you know, a lot of people got upset and said, you know, well, you're just putting essential because that means they're expendable. And I want to, you know, to echo and just say, hey, just because you are essential does not mean you are expendable. If you claim someone as an essential worker, then you truly value them as essential and as a human being. And I think as a company, as English Meadows as a whole, I think we do a phenomenal job of making sure that our employees feel essential. Um, and I don't even like using the term employees. That's just more of like a generic term as a whole. Um, but we really believe that our caregivers and our team members are essential here. Um, and that, you know, they're the ones that provide the care and that's, you know, that's what we want to keep doing is making sure we care for our caregivers and care for them well. Yeah. They're family, right? I mean, we, yeah. we care about family and we want the best for our family and want to do what's best for them. So yeah, I love it. Well, a lot of exciting things coming from Greg and the, the team at English Meadows. So, uh, thanks so much for, for joining me today, Greg, and, uh, hope to see and hang out with you here soon. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for uh thanks for having me.